Well, good morning, Coach. Just wondering, first of all, if you can tell us about Nick Holden and uh, where he was today or why he wasn't on the ice. Yeah, maintenance day for Nick. Um, and uh, we expect uh, and we're hopeful that uh, he'll be going tomorrow. Okay. As far as your lines are concerned, Coach, it looks like you're, you ran this morning's practice with the same lines that sort of finished the game on Saturday night. Um, being at home, does it make a difference or are you comfortable enough to say, let's give it another try here or do you have options, obviously? Well, I have options, obviously, to go back, um, you know, to uh, the, the uh, Norris Chuck Batherson line. But I think with Connor Brown out, it, uh, you know, it, it thins us a bit on the right side. And, uh, you know, we get a little bit more balanced attack with uh, Timmy and Drake um, and, and Paulie on that on the one line. And obviously, uh, for me, um, uh, Cadet and, uh, and Tierney was our best line in the third period. So it spreads it out a bit. Not to say that we can't go right back to it. I just wanted to see what kind of we look like today in practice. Um, but it gives us a little more balanced attack for sure. The uh, lone remaining hand in the queue is Bruce Garriott at Post Media. Hey, DJ, a couple of things for you. Just what have you done right in the last couple of games? Um, obviously puck luck in Edmonton. Let's not, uh, kid ourselves, you know, you, you know, the three, one lead, uh, for them. And, uh, you know, we stayed with it. We got a good feel in there. Guys believe in each other. Um, you know, we, we've had some injuries, we've had some tough times. Um, and sometimes that helps a team. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't feel as down in bad situations. We've been through some real tough ones. Um, certainly our special teams. So if you look at from a hockey point of view, uh, our power play when we win. I mean, when we have those five guys in the lineup, there's been some games they've been out and the power play hasn't been as good. But when those five guys uh, are getting opportunities, they've done a real nice job. And our penalty kill has, has been very good as well. And, and then obviously the obvious is, is the goaltending continues to give us a chance every night. Well, and I, I was going to say, I mean, Matt Murray has given you a good opportunity in the last couple of games. Have you thought about tomorrow? Yet or... Yeah, um, we're, it's up in the air. I'll talk to Berkey again. But, you know, if you look back to December, we got some really good goaltending from Forzy. I mean, he got this thing started for us, um, you know, when he hadn't played in a while and, and he come in and battle and kind of got this thing going. Now there's some compete going on in there, um, you know, to who wants the net. And and, and Mur came and gave us a couple good games. So, I mean, it is, uh, uh, um, you know, coming back from the West, um, you know, to play the, the next game. We're going to talk to Berkey and see what his thoughts are, who gives us the best chance to win. I, I just got a couple other things for you, DJ. One of the things you, you, you haven't played teams like in, in the lower f uh, half of the league in the standings. Um, you have played well. I think, I think I checked the other day, DJ, and you're 6-6-0 six, six oh against teams that are in the top 10. What does that say about the schedule you've had to this point and, and, you know, how you've played against those guys? Well, uh, I was looking the other day. I mean, we've played every team that's in the playoffs in East right now, some more than, 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 uh, than once. I think Toronto for three and Tampa for three. Um, but that really, at the end of the day, anyone could beat anyone in this league. I mean, you look at, um, you know, Arizona beats Toronto, uh, you know, uh, you know, last week, um, you know, I, I think I seen some, uh, the guys we're talking about today, someone tweeted out, I don't know who it was, but uh, it was like guaranteed win or something against uh, uh, Edmonton was going to beat us. Um, you don't know. Anyone can beat anyone. And the Buffalo Sabres have come out and played way better this year. They have a lot of depth. Uh, their young guys, you know, look like they're coming, the Cousins and, uh, and um, guys on the back end. So, I mean, they've beaten teams too. So everything, I mean, it, it's great. You're not playing Ovechkin tonight or, or McDavid, but at the same point, um, there's good players on that team, just like there is on ours. And we just got to keep getting better ourselves. Sorry. I have two other things. Number one is tomorrow night, you play in an empty rink. Um, not, you know, how do you miss the atmosphere when fans aren't there? Well, you can't replace it. I mean, our, our young guys, and, and we talked about this is, is getting going at home here. Um, you know, and, you know, feeling good with the fans and, and having an atmosphere here. I mean, there's some good young players that are going to be here for a long time and making this a place that teams don't want to come in or teams, when they come in, you're, you're going to get their best every night. I mean, I think right now you can say that about Florida. I mean, teams are going in over the last week or so and they're losing by a touchdown every night. Um, 
And uh, you want to be one of those teams that, you know, when, when you come into Ottawa, um, you know, and, and it takes time to build it, but um, you come in here and you know, you're going to get our best. And we want to start to build that. And it, it's hard to do it without fans. And just the uh, last thing, D, DJ, and thank you. Any, any timetable on Connor Brown? No, there isn't. Um, you know, he was at the dentist and did everything he, he could do today, but um, I mean, we're hopeful um, sooner than later, but it's going to be, you know, three weeks uh, plus uh, probably for sure. Claire Hannah, TSN. Hey, DJ, um, just a couple questions from me. Um, back to the goaltending situation, you said that there's going to be some compete going on to who wants to be in the net. Do you like having a situation where two or maybe even three guys are battling for number one, or would you prefer to kind of have a guy established as the number one with a backup and knowing rules? Well, I think every coach would, would probably just rather have a, a clear one. Um, a guy because a clear one is a guy that's going to play the majority of the games who's going to give you a chance to win every night and, and that's what Murr was brought in to do um, you know obviously and, and he would tell you the same obviously we didn't play great in front of him and, and he didn't get the results he wanted um, you know but we're looking for him um, to, to try and reestablish himself but sometimes that's another guy pushing you it's no different than then uh, uh, centers, wingers, you know, you, you could be the top dog, but, you know, someone's always got to be pushing from behind you sometimes to push you. And, uh, you know, I think both Gus and Forzy are capable of that. And then my second one is you guys, especially against um, Edmonton, seem to be playing with a lot of joy, I'll call it. Do you think that all that practice has given your team more of an appreciation when you get to game time? Well, you'd like to believe so. It's just these guys really like each other. Um, there's been a lot of teams I've been on, been around, um, you know, where you have guys that don't uh, mix in the group or you have split groups in there. Um, you know, that's not the case. Brady and Shabby are the leaders here. Um, they do a real good job with the guys. Everyone's involved. And, you know, it's it's hard when you're not winning. But when you're winning, they're having a heck of a lot of fun. And, and obviously, we want to keep this thing going. But you could see something special being built here. You're not going to win every night, but um, these guys care about each other. And, and, and I mean, you clearly can see it. Anyone that hangs around our team around the locker room, you know, they have fun, the games, they, they joke with each other. It, it's the start of something good. Um, there's lots of work to do, um, but that part is in place. Thank you. We'll go to uh, Mark Broussard at Ladois. of uh, Bernard Docker playing with Shabbat the last couple of games in Alberta? thought he was uh, really good in Calgary. Obviously, uh, I, th I think everyone on the back end struggled a little bit in the first period with the amount of speed they brought at us. And, and I would say not just the back end, the, um, you know, the forwards. We, we weren't as sharp as we were in, in Calgary. Um, as the game on, went on, we got better. Um, but, I mean, that's a tall order. You're, you're going out there, um, you're a first-year guy, and you've got McDavid coming down and Tricidal coming down and they're forechecking you and they're hemming you in. I mean, you can't get that experience anywhere else, but also they're the two best players in the world. And it, not just Doc um, or young defensemen, everyone, anyone in the league, uh, that's a tall order. So I think he's done a real nice job. Um, you know, and he's learning on the spot. My other one would be uh, tomorrow Sabres are in town and uh, uh, you won't get a chance, I guess, to – Craig Anderson is, is out. Uh, it's too bad, I guess, that he, he doesn't get a chance to come back and play and no fans on top of that. No, for sure. I mean, I, I wasn't here when Andy was here. Um, I was here his last year, but I wasn't here when Andy was really rolling, um, you know, and he was a great pro, you know, on the way out, kind of handing the reins over, um, you know, for an opportunity, you know, for the rebuild and letting a young guy take it. Um, but, I mean, anyone that watched that magical run, um, that, that got cut short, um, you know, uh, in overtime there, uh, he was unbelievable. Um, you know, the whole story, uh, I think there's so much respect for him around here, his teammates, the fans, and, and it is unfortunate and hopefully he keeps playing and he gets to come back later in the year, maybe. And, and, uh, and, and there is fans or next year, because, uh, uh you know, I, I think everyone here knows what he meant to the franchise and how good he was. Um, to almost uh, getting this team uh, to the Stanley Cup. Thank you. Final question is from Matt Tidcombe at senators.com. 
Hey, DJ, just a question for me. Um, Saturday was uh, Tim Stutz's 83rd NHL game. So obviously essentially a full, se well, full season now. And I think one year to the date of his NHL debut. Just where have you seen the biggest growth in his game? And obviously part of that is obviously his adjustment to playing center now too. Well, the biggest, biggest growth for me um, is his ability to deal with adversity. Um, his body language, if you've seen his first year when, you know, something went bad, you see he wore it. Um, you know, when he really got down on himself, um, you know, and we, you know, I kept coming up with different things that, you know, his scoring comparison against, you know, Barkoff at the same age or Mitch Marner and, and, you know, how Mitch wasn't even in the NHL last year when it was his first year. And, and now you see when things don't go great for him, it doesn't affect him as much. And as he get, continues to get older, um, you know, you can see his body language is better. He's getting more confident. He knows now how dangerous he can be on the power play by shooting the puck. He, he's just, you know, uh, I'd say he's coming along as good as we could expect for a young guy now playing center. He just looks so much more confident and more comfortable in his skin.